Hey folks, so in today's video we're going to be focusing on acids and bases and how um, they are involved in some key neutralisation reactions. So we'll start by looking at acids. So acids are substances that release hydrogen ions or H plus ions, also known as protons, when they are dissolved in water. And there are two types of acids or they can be classified in two ways. They can either be strong acids or they can either be weak acids. The difference being then between a strong and a weak, well, when an acid then dissolves in water, it will dissociate. And when it dissociates, that basically means it's breaking down. And the bit that breaks down is the bit that releases the hydrogen ion. So strong acids, when we dissolve them in water, they will completely dissociate or they will completely break down to form these hydrogen ions. Weak acids then, they will only partially dissociate. So only some of the acid molecules will break down to release these H plus ions. Some common examples then, strong acids you're probably already aware of. We've got hydrochloric, nitric acid, sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid. They are the most common examples of strong acids. Weak acids then, carboxylic acids are all weak acids, are all classified as weak acids. And citric acid is also um, classified as a weak acid. So to show this dissociation as a chemical equation, I'm going to use hydrochloric acid as the example for the strong acid. So to show that the hydrogen chloride has been dissolved in water, we use the state symbols AQ because that means dissolved in water and it now forms hydrochloric acid. So when it's not dissolved in water, the compound HCl is actually hydrogen chloride and it's a gas at room temperature. But when you take the hydrogen chloride and you dissolve it in water, that's when it becomes hydrochloric acid. Because when you add it to water or you dissolve it in water, it breaks down. And it breaks down into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. So that molecule of HCl has now broken down, it's now dissociated. And we say that it completely dissociates and that is shown by this arrow here uh, that suggests that the reaction is not reversible. So all of those um, HCl molecules will all break down to form H plus and Cl minus. Weak acids then are different, they only partially dissociate and I'm going to use ethanoic acid to demonstrate this. Again, to show that it's an acid, we use the state symbols AQ to show it's dissolved in water. Now you'll notice that the arrow I'm drawing shows or suggests that this is a reversible reaction, meaning that once the acid molecule has dissociated into the products, those two products can then reform or rejoin together to reform the acid. So not all of the ethanoic acid molecules will dissociate. Some of them will remain intact. And obviously it dissociates to form H plus ions, according to the definition, and it's the hydrogen on the end uh, attached to the oxygen that is released. And then we're going to be left with the negative ion of the CH3COO minus. Now, because of this difference in dissociation, um, if you were to take both acids, so hydrogen, uh, hydrochloric acid and ethanoic acid, and they were of the same concentration, one of them would have a lower pH, so one of them would be more acidic, and it would be the strong acid that's more acidic because more a higher proportion, well, 100% of the molecules will break down to release hydrogen ions. And pH, to measure the pH, it's all to do with the number of hydrogen ions. Remembering that a low pH um, tells us that something's very acidic. So strong acids will have a lower pH because they're more acidic because they have more hydrogen ions um, that are dissociated per molecule. And because of this, when you have chemical reactions, their reactions will be much more vigorous compared to a weak acid of the same concentration. So weak acids compared to strong acids will have a higher pH because there are fewer H plus ions being released per molecule. So therefore, their reactions will be less vigorous. And I'm talking about acids of the same concentration. So even though they're the same concentration, because one fully dissociates and one partially dissociates, their reactions will be slightly different. And it's all to do with the number of hydrogen ions that are released. Moving on to bases. So bases are substances that neutralize an acid to form a salt. Some key examples of bases, we've got metal oxides, metal carbonates, and metal hydroxides, also known as alkalis. 
Now alkalis then are bases, um, people don't realise that they're bases, but they are soluble bases, which means they will, they're able to dissolve in water or the majority of them are able to dissolve in water. And when we dissolve an alkali in water, they don't release H plus ions, they release hydroxide ions, so OH minus ions. Some common bases, in fact, I'm just going to show by a reaction what happens. I'm going to take a common alkali, sodium hydroxide, AQ, remember, means dissolved in water, because according to the definition, they're dissolved in water. So it will dissociate, an alkali will dissociate to form OH minus ions instead of the H plus ions, and then you're left with the positive, in this case, sodium ions. So some common bases, we've got some oxides, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide, copper oxide, some carbonates there, and then underneath we've got some alkalis, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. Now, NH3, you may already know, is a compound called ammonia, and ammonia is actually classified as a weak base or alkali. And you won't necessarily cover um, the properties of, of ammonia until you look at acid-base equilibria in A2. So I'll just leave that with you there, that ammonia is classed as a weak base. Moving on to neutralisation reactions. So these will occur when a H plus ion from an acid reacts with a base to form a salt and water. Water being the key product here to make it a neutralisation reaction. So to form a salt... The H plus ion in the acid is replaced by a metal ion or an ammonium ion if we're using ammonia as the base. Key neutralisation reactions to learn. So we've got acid plus a metal oxide, a base making a salt and water. For example, uh, I don't know, hydrogen chloride plus calcium oxide will make calcium chloride plus water. So we can see that the hydrogen, that's not balanced, we need to balance that. That's now balanced. So we can see that the hydrogen swaps with the metal ion in the base to form the salt. So the salt being calcium chloride, and we can see that from the chemical equation. Another neutralization reaction is an acid plus an alkali, or in other words, a metal hydroxide to make a salt and water. Let's take hydrogen chloride again, react it with an alkali such as NaOH. This time the salt will be sodium chloride plus water and again we can see that the hydrogen ion has swapped with the metal ion to form the salt sodium chloride. A couple more, acid plus a metal carbonate. So if we take hydrogen chloride plus calcium carbonate as a common carbonate Again, the salt will be calcium chloride, and then we've got carbon dioxide plus water being formed this time. Uh, we need to, just need to very quickly balance it. And again, we can see that the hydrogen ion swaps with the metal ion to form the salt, calcium chloride. And the final neutralization we actually need to be aware of then is an acid plus ammonia will make an ammonium salt. So in this case, there's only one product this time I'm going to, no, I'm going to stick with hydrogen, hydrochloric acid plus ammonia. We'll make an ammonium salt, remembering that the ammonium ion has the formula NH4+. Plus. And in this case, then, we formed an ammonium salt. We formed ammonium chloride. Thanks for watching. For more chemistry tips and revision, hit subscribe, click on the like button and check out my Instagram page using the link below.